Hello and welcome back to the year 2 tutorial series. In this video we're going to look at Composer and Composer is a package manager which year 2 is based on. So you use Composer when you first install the templates to start work and you will also use Composer a lot if you want to add on uh, optional functionality from other developers perhaps even other modules from your own development teams and it's basically just a package manager which allows you to specify various things so when you first download the basic template one of the things that you might have noticed is there is a composer.json in the root of the template and that's because the basic template itself as well as the advanced template are actually composer packages in one sense or another so what that means is as well as it being a composer package composer packages are allowed to depend on other packages so as well as all the usual stuff you would expect when you create a module of code you get to specify a name and description and all those kinds of things the kind of important stuff really are these sections here which talk about the dependencies for this package uh, there are various other things that we won't really talk about um, today and also when in some of the other packages we'll look at you'll see that they enable an auto loading specification which tells Composer where it will find certain classes for certain namespaces so if we consider this basic template we are told that the basic template requires PHP and in this case a version greater than 5.4 or greater than or equal to 5.4 and then for the next four dependencies we're told that uh, the latest version uh, is fine for what we need and the same for the development needs as well you'll notice that the development are things tools like GI which is the model view controller generator uh, Faker which is a, uh, a test proxy uh, debug is the debug toolbar uh, and I don't know what codeception is uh, I'm not sure if it's important or not and when we first download this none of these dependencies will be present but when we run composer update composer update will read the composer.json that's in the current directory and it will then download all of the dependencies into a folder called vendor so when you see vendor that's a composerism and it just means everything that I download I'm going to put underneath vendor now what's quite clever here is if uh, we go into one of these dependencies so let's say it's, it needs yeasoft e2 so uh, composer downloads yeasoft e2 and if we notice here e2 has its own composer.json uh, now in this case this also requires PHP, it requires various other things, U2 Composer, um, all kinds of things. But what's interesting to note here is because this is not the top level JSON, you'll notice that when it downloads U2 Composer, it doesn't download it into a subfolder of U2 called Vendor. It downloads it into the top level Vendor folder, the one up here so that composer which is required by this package gets put at the same level and so you what you don't end up with is you don't end up with lots of nested vendor folders and lots of duplicates of the same packages everything gets downloaded into the same folder how does composer work well it works fairly simply by if we go to github um, let's go to um, yeasoft for instance and in eSoft we'll find these are all packages that relate to these packages under here <clears throat> so if we just pick one randomly let's just pick e2 bootstrap if we know that this is going to become a composer package then all we need to do is make sure that it has a composer.json file there's various things in here that are necessary like all the metadata license those kinds of things most of it is not mandatory but we kind of put it in because it's good practice we then put in any dependencies that are important and in this case because we know we're going to use it with the ye auto loader we also tell it that anything under the ye bootstrap namespace 
relates to files that live underneath this package. So if we notice things like an alert, you'll notice this namespace is under ye bootstrap. Well, that's great, but what if I need to use this alert class up here in my application under one of the, um, well, under here, one of the views, for instance? How does it know where to find it? Well, part of the great thing about Composer is when you download these dependencies, for instance, ye bootstrap, Composer itself will read this composer.json after downloading this package and it will say, oh, hi, here we go. We've got an autoload definition for the namespace ye bootstrap. Because this is JSON, those backslashes are escaped with another backslash, which is very confusing, I know. But what then happens is underneath the composer folder, there are a set of files here which will basically say where everything is. Um, I'm not, I can't remember which one's which where all of the uh, namespace is mapped to. So in this case, it says, if you're looking for ye bootstrap stuff, you will find it under the folder ye soft, ye to bootstrap. Um, and that's how our file dependencies and our auto loading works. So all of that is handled for us automatically. And the way that actually works is if we look at, um, I think it's, is it under here? Yeah, so if you look under here, um, the ye bootstrap file itself takes in vendor autoload.php and if we look at autoload you'll notice that says pull in autoload real from composer so autoload real that's going to pull in all the rest of the stuff that's going to pull in the class maps the files the psr4 and everything else all of that is already pulled in automatically by ye so that there is the composer autoload it also brings in the ye autoloader afterwards. So that means that ye autoloader will get first chance at autoloading classes. And if that doesn't work, then it will use Composer and it will autoload the classes from there. And that's really helpful because it means when we download these, if they've been specified correctly, we don't need to do any more work. We can just say, I want ye2 bootstrap run composer update and then straight away in one of our views down here um, let's just pick one at random we can say i want to use ye bootstrap and then i don't know carousel or something like that so straight away that's all going to work automatically and i don't have to do anything else so that's composer it's fairly straightforward um, once we have uh, defined our composer.json specified our dependencies any namespace mappings um, there's a whole load of stuff you can specify in composer i don't understand most of it but once you've done that um, and you've committed that into your github project what happens is you go to get composer.org uh, and you would you know if you wanted to actually create a package then what you can do is you can submit one you'd have to sign in you point this at your github project and then when you do that packagist which is the most common or the main composer online repository will go to github find that composer.json read all of the important information create your composer package and then host it publicly so then all you would need to do is go back into here Go back into your own composer.json and say, right, I now need, want to add, you know, uh, another. Well, let's just add one here and do it, shall we? Um, uh, Imsky <clears throat> holder colon star whatever. Uh, now, remember in JSON, they don't like the trailing commas like you do in PHP, so be careful of that. So we just add that in there into require, and this is my um, main one. And then all I need to do is run up command, go into C projects basic, run composer update. That's all I need to do. And then <clears throat> while that's doing that, we'll just quickly show you that under here at the minute, there is no imsky directory. That directory doesn't exist. But by doing that, um, it usually takes a little while because it's got to go online and, and check versions, all the rest of it. 
but at some point that's going to download holder which is an image placeholder and it's going to dump it into my vendor directory so you can see composers composers really easy to use for us as developers if you're creating packages it takes a little bit more work but you can see here it will tell you what you need to do in your vendor.json in order to actually get everything ready publishing it is fairly straightforward i had a few problems when I first tried to create a composer package on this website, but they were to do with not having the correct format of composer.json. But other than that, it's very easy. Packages will host your package for free. And then obviously you can publish that. It's public anyway, but you could then publish it if you were writing something useful for everybody else. Um, how's composer dot doing? Um, it's not found it yet. Um, and then and then that's kind of it really everything's auto loaded everything works automatically um, in the next video I'm going to talk briefly about modules but um, one of the things that you'll notice with vendor is it pulls in all kinds of different sorts of packages so if we look at Swift Mailer Swift Mailer is nothing to do with ye it's a generic email um, system so there's nothing that gets automatically done here all that happens is it pulls in Swift Mailer um, the composer uh, will tell it where the files are if you need um, if you need anything to do with Swift uh, Swift Mailer that's automatically loaded so that's not really very interesting uh, if we look at the bootstrap again really it's just a collection of widgets so again there's nothing particularly interesting about that load of widget classes but because of the auto loading bit in here it means we can access them straight away in our code like we did in that view file um, but then the other ones that you can pull in as well are things like if we go to MDM soft admins this is the e2 admin one you'll notice that this is actually a module now we're going to talk about modules in in the next um, video but by providing this module class what it enables us to do is to configure that in our modules configuration right at the top level in our config and then we get access to all of the uh, views and controllers and all the rest of it within that module so if we do um, admin um, then we get into the admin module and we get a whole load of um, extra pages and stuff um, added to our site automatically so that's about it for composer uh, if you if you want any more information obviously you can go to getcomposer.org <clears throat> that's now hopefully um, installed imski holder and you see under there again nothing particularly to do with ye but if this has added the auto load stuff which it might have or might not have um it doesn't look like it has actually so if we want to use this we would have to actually um, add in the auto loading stuff ourselves um, but that's fine we could do that in our um, class map or in our aliases so there you go that's it about composer any comments or questions please add them below otherwise i'll see you in the next video